Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. In this video, I'm going to go over my two handed fighting melee cleric build, which is the build I use for my main character. I'm also going to post a written version of the build on the cleric forums on DDO.com. I'll put a link in the description to this video so you can check it out. But I'm also going to go over a few things in this video that I won't have necessarily on the written version, so I hope you'll watch this video as well. So let's talk about the build goal. The goal of the build is to create a melee cleric that's able to contribute good melee DPS while at the same time maintaining the minimum requirements you need to be a good party and raid healer. This build is focused on area of effect DPS through two-handed fighting and cleaving, but you can also make some small modifications to the build if you would prefer going single weapon fighting or two weapon fighting. And those versions of the build are going to have better DPS against single targets, but not as good DPS against many targets. Let's talk about the split. The split of this build is 15 Cleric, 4 Paladin, 1 Fighter. Your alignment's going to be lawful good because you're taking Paladin levels. So why 15 Cleric? You could go lower than 15 Cleric and still be a healer, but I think 15 Cleric is the right mark here. Lower than 15 Cleric would lose key level 8 spells like Mass Death Ward and Symbol of Death and Cure Critical Mass. But it really doesn't make sense to take more than 15 Cleric because you'd be giving up so much from splashes. So why one fighter? One fighter gives you a lot. It gives you haste boost, it gives you martial weapon proficiencies that you absolutely have to have, and it gives you an extra feat. Haste boost in particular, when combined with human damage boost, gives you an excellent burst DPS option on this build. It's very, very helpful. So why for Paladin? Well, two Paladin levels gives you access to Divine Grace, and three Paladin levels gives you access to some goodies in the Sacred Defender tree. The best of these goodies are plus 20% hit points, and you also get some nice bonuses to saves and PRR. The four Paladin I decided on with the future promise Divine Grace nerf in mind. This is not in effect yet, but the, de the developers have listed on the official bug report that this change will happen, which will basically cap your your charisma modifier that's applied to your saves based on your paladin level. And what 4 paladin does is give gives this build a high enough ceiling to where that nerf doesn't affect it. However, I just want to say the developers just this past week mentioned that they are considering not implementing this divine grace nerf now, so this build could possibly change a little bit in the future. If it does change, the only change is I'll drop to three Paladin levels instead of four and take another Fighter level for an extra feat. So it'll be 15 Cleric, three Paladin, two Fighter. But overall, it doesn't make a huge difference. You still get a few things from four Paladin you don't get from three Paladin, such as the, the extra tier of Healing Amp from the Knights of the Chalice tree you would get an extra feat by taking an extra fighter level two instead of one but there's really nothing key no key feats that you have to have precision is would be kinda nice to have but it's not essential I don't feel it's essential so let's talk about race when it comes to race there's really only one choice and that's human or purple dragon knight they're pretty much the same thing Human gives you so much. It gives you an extra feat, it gives you heal amp, and it gives you human damage boost. And those are all way better than what you get from other trees. Other races are suboptimal. Dwarf and half work were worth a consideration, but overall they're a lot worse because they lose a feat compared to human, and their racial damage enhancements are too expensive. They're just not worth the heavy action point cost. In addition, human has higher burst DPS than either of those races due to human damage boost, and human doesn't take the negative 2 charisma hit, and it doesn't take the negative 2 intelligence hit that half orc gets. And human offers a, fir a cheap first tier of 10% healing amp. 
actually this is plus 20 now because healing amp has changed to additive but the main point is human offers some cheap healing amp that other races don't get let's talk about starting stats I'll tell you what I use this isn't a firm guideline you can mix it up a little bit but what I use for a 36 point build is 16 strength 14 dexterity 16 constitution 8 wisdom 8 intelligence and 16 charisma I put all my level ups into strength now the main thing is you want to have 16 strength 16 charisma and 16 constitution I put more points into dexterity because I find reflex saves more essential than will saves and a few extra spell points from putting uh, more points into wisdom and meeting the requirements to cast level 8 spells is not a concern you can easily get there through tomes and uh, gearing it, in game plus 10 wisdom items are everywhere so it's not hard to meet that requirement but if you're okay with a lower reflex save you can put some points into wisdom and take some out of dexterity it's really up to you just don't spend more than one build point per stat point that way you get the best deal intelligence you don't need more than eight intelligence to start because the two main skills that, that, that you really need are heal and UMD and you have enough skill points already to max those out so on that note let's talk about skills as I've said the skills I use are heal and UMD I also put points into jump you might be asking why don't I put points into balance well I've ran lives with full ranks of balance and I haven't even been able to notice the difference when I get tripped not to mention this build has very high saves your reflex save is going to be in the 70s probably around around 70 uh, when you get to level 28 so you shouldn't be failing any very many trip attempts the only ones you should you will fail are the no fail ones such as the uh, the cats in the veil there's a few enemies that have a no save trip but that's not very common and one of the reasons you don't need to put a lot of any points into intelligence is you already have enough skill points to max out heal and UMD which are your two most important skills UMD gives you all kinds of goodies and a lot of conveniences and heal gives you a little boost to your positive spell power let's talk about feats now for melee feats you're gonna take the two-handed fighting line which consists of two-handed fighting improved two-handed fighting and greater two-handed fighting you're also going to take power attack cleave great cleave and improved critical slash for meta magic feats you're going to take empower heal maximize quicken and empower your epic feats are going to be overwhelming critical you'll use your other epic feat slot to fit in one of the other feats I mentioned and your epic destiny feats are going to be perfect two-handed fighting and perfect two-weapon fighting okay now let's open up the enhancement trees and I'll show you what I use for my enhancements let's start with the tree I invest most heavily in which is radiant servant I put 32 points into radiant servant for healing aura and not a not a point more healing aura is the main thing I'm going for for this tree along with your radiant servant burst and this gives you all the healing ability that you need to be a party and raid healer this is a burst healing build you don't have a lot of spell points because you don't need them you're gonna be relying on your radiant servant bursts and aura to heal the party if you want tips on how to heal with this build I suggest you check out my clear healing guide which uh, is a video I made a few months ago if you want to check that out I'll put a link in the description let's talk about uh, the next tree I use which is Knights of the Chalice Knights of the Chalice gets you a lot of good things it gives you exalted cleave it gives you exalted smite 
and it gets you a couple heal uh, tiers of healing amp and this is the tier I talked about earlier that you get from taking four paladin over three paladin um, there's another I just want to note that empowered smite is a nice ability but it's bugged right now which is why I'm not taking it so my my action points might get mixed up a little bit after I have a chance to test out the non bugged version of this whenever that fix happens let's talk about sacred defender which is the next next tree I use sacred defender this is your key enhancement right here tenacious defense this gives you your plus 20 percent sacred bonus to your hit points the sacred defender line also gives you really nice stuff this enhancement durable defense gives you plus 15 PRR and MRR and this first tier here gives you plus three to your saves which is awesome there's a big difference to, t between being in stance and being out of stance when I'm in stance I have 1080 hit points when I'm not that goes down to about 900 I believe yeah 900 the only downside um, of being in sacred defender stance is you can't benefit from rage effects like primal scream from the fury of the wild tree and rage potions or the rage spell but that's well worth it considering all the survivability you gain okay let's talk about the next tree I use which is war priest and I don't put much into war priest it's not a very good tree <laughs> You all have probably seen my other video where I, I, I rant for about 35-40 minutes about how bad this tree is. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link for that in the description as well. But you shouldn't be investing heavily in this tree. The, only, the main thing you want out of this tree is Divine Might. And these two enhancements here are really nice. Toughness, which gives you a little bit of hit points, and Wall of Steel, which gives you up to plus 10 PRR. The reason I don't have this is I just don't have enough I don't have enough um, action points to go around or I would be taking these. The next tree is Kensei. The main thing you want out of Kensei is your haste boost which I mentioned earlier and that's it. Human or purple dragonite tree they're pretty much the same the main things you want are human damage boost and this first heal tier of healing amp which I think is well worth it it's so cheap you know I I definitely would suggest you take that let's talk about my gear I'll open up my inventory here so you all can have a look at it this is my current gear setup now this character is not completely finished I've still got some work to do on him and I'll open up my character sheet so you can see my stats um, I particularly need to work on evening out his stats which some I have a few odd numbers here I need to fix that and I'm also really open to mixing up my gear in the future particularly my augments I still need to work on those I have, I have some empty augment, augment slots and there's still a few things I want um, that I don't have such as the uh, the epic um, trinket from the epic abbot raid the epic litany of the dead I don't have that so right now I have a actually a, a plus three con uh, um, trinket in there insightful con in there right now but let's go through each item one by one start with the helm I have the mythic well actually I only have the epic emerald glaze I'd like to upgrade to the mythic but it really doesn't make much of a difference for a battle cleric because it's an insightful bonus but that's another topic let's start this is stay on the helm the helm gives you plus 11 strength which is nice and it gives you tendon slice six percent which isn't too great but it's a little bit of CC it's something but the main thing you're getting out of this helm is the plus 11 strength. My necklace slot, this is my flexible slot. I sometimes use say the torque if I w need SP and I can swap other stuff in here if I need it but my main necklace I wear is this green steel necklace I made 
it has 20% blur built into it as well as 15 uh, I'm sorry it has uh, perma blur on it of 20% and it has the plus 45 HP bonus that stacks with everything and also serves it as a displacement clicky and it's nice to have this one displacement clicky that, clicky that I always have on it it makes me um, be able to pick up a displacement a lot faster since my other displacement clickies are on weapons so this one lets me access displacement without having to swap a weapon my trinket as I mentioned earlier is in a state of flux right now I'm currently doing as many mark of deaths as I can to try and get the epic litany of the dead but right now I have a, a con plus three here but that's not mandatory it's just kind of my filler item right now until I get that trinket um, my cape now this is a loot gen this is a wisdom plus 10 with heal plus 19 on it that I found you gotta fit a wisdom item somewhere so you can cast your spells and I decide to use the cape slot for this now I've considered slotting a wisdom augment to save this cape slot for something else but I haven't seen too many good alternatives so I'm just sticking with this for now although by using an, a wisdom augment I could probably free up the slot in the future and it's something I'm looking into my belt I use the epic quarter reprisals which is from the necro chain a lot of this stuff is from the necro 4 chain it's not too hard to farm um, the epic quarter reprisals gives you plus 11 charisma I also have plus 2 good luck slotted in here to give you a little bit of a saving throw bonus and this also has sheltering on it plus 24 which adds to your PRR very nice thing to have let's go to my ring I have a, the best this serves as the best false life and health ring I can get constitution plus 10 of false life just to give me hit points my gloves are the iron mitts from three barrel cove really nice care gloves it has nice healing amp on it which was plus 30 percent now it's plus 60 additive but it also has vitality plus 40 on it which stacks with all my other HP bonuses the resistance is kind of a, is a wash I don't really need that since I have a high resistance bonus on these next pair of boots which I'll show you in a second but the iron mitts are mainly here for the healing amp I also have a globe, globe of true imperial blood slotted in which adds a plus one to each of my stats. Okay, for my boots, I have the Epic Boots of the Innocent. This is also from the Necro 4 Epic Chain. Really, really nice pair of boots and this is a must-have item. Gives you a plus 11 resistance bonus. It gives you a speed bonus which is equivalent to haste for your attack speed so you can have just as good of attack speed just wearing these boots as you do with the haste spell cast on you it also has greater heroism on it which is nice although I can UMD GH scrolls but it's a nice convenience to have um, my ring here is just a deadly ring of wizardry a little bit of hit points and you need to slot a deadly item in somewhere um, my bracers I'm considering swapping but forever I've had these Levix bracers in here for the healing amp bonus um, once I see a better pair of bracers perhaps I'll swap this out but I love having healing amp on the build I think it helps the your survivability a lot so I still keep these bracers in this slot even though they're quite an old item another must-have item is your armor here which at level 28 is your shadow dragon plate you can get this from the death worm raid if you need ingredients you can also buy them on the auction house if you like they could you're risking buying duped items but they are on the auction house for cheap but you gotta have this armor it's by far the best heavy armor available at level 28 because it gives you 30 DR and it also gives you 60 DR which is which happens when you're under 75% health. It's wonderful to have. It's a huge boost to your survivability. It also has shadow phase clicky on it, which is really useful if you get surrounded by mobs, particularly if you start crowd surfing, which can happen if there's a ton of mobs in, on the 
um, in the area and you try to jump over them and you get caught on the top. Shadow phase lets you pass right through mobs as if they aren't there. Uh, I also have a golem's heart slotted in here just because I have so many sl augment slots that I really have nothing else to use it for. And golem's heart is, you know, it's something. It gives you a little healing every once in a while and it does a little bit of DPS to surrounding enemies. Not, you know, it's not anything you have to have by any means. It's just something to fill a slot. The goggles I use are Epic Mentals. This is also from the Necro 4 Epic Epic Chain. It has your Seeker plus 10 and Exceptional Seeker plus 2. That improves your critical damage. And I also slotted a Crushing Wave Guard in here. It's not essential, but it's something. Like I said, I have so many. It's a little bit of DPS. Like I said, I have so many slots here. I just don't have anything else to use it for. This also gives you a nice plus 5 to your UMD, and it gives you that dexterity plus 11 you need for your reflex saves. And then last but not least is my weapon. Right now I'm using a Tier 2 Thunderforge Falcon. From all the math I've read, Falcon is the way to go for your two-handed fighting weapons. The critical range more than makes up for the loss in base damage. I only have tier 2. Now I want, I'm working on a tier, tier 3 right now to pick up the Mortal Fear upgrade, which is a huge boost to your DPS if you can get it. But it's a, quite a long grind to get it, and it's not required by any means. You can still do really well with just a tier 2. And it's not too hard to too hard to get a tier two. One important thing is your your devo your augment slot on this weapon. You have a red slot, and you need to slot a devotion augment in here, the highest one you can get. There's really nowhere else you can fit devotion into your gear set. You've got to put it in your weapon slot, and it's not a big loss of DPS either. Uh, another nice augment I like using, which I put in this weapon, is the Ruby of Endless Night, which you can only get from Maybar. I'm assuming you, you can get it from the Maybar replacement event that they have planned. So if uh, next time that event comes around, definitely farm it out. It's really nice to have. It gives a, on a Vorpal hit, it gives a negative level to the creature you're attacking, which an Epic Elite, if this happens on the first hit, it can knock out a lot of HP and it's a nice little DPS booster. Um, for your tier 1 and tier 2 upgrades, I went with first degree burns and Dragon's Edge. And these really are the best DPS upgrades that Dragon's Edge gets you through some fortification and the first degree burns gives you a little bit of DPS, extra DPS. Okay, um, I think I've already, I was going to talk about augments next, but I think I've already covered that. The main thing that you want, as I've said, is the devotion augment to put in your weapon. Make sure you have the highest devotion augment you can find, which at cap is probably going to be that 138. Also, make sure you slot that Gro Globe of True Imperial Blood that I mentioned earlier. It gives you a plus one to all stats. You want that good luck augment to give you a plus two luck bonus to all your saves and skills. Um, Insightful Khan and Meridian Fragment are nice if you can get them, but they're not, I wouldn't say they're essential. And with this, with the new Necro 4 gear, you can, you're going to have more augment slots than you know what to do with, so there's no reason not to slot a bunch of stuff. Okay, let's talk about Epic Destinies. You really only have two here to consider. Legendary Dreadnought and Divine Crusader. Now, if I would have made this video before Update 24, I would have said stay in Divine Crusader all the time. But with Update 24, they changed Master's Blitz to start with three stacks instead of one. And this has made it much 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 easier to get a full stack of blitz and to keep it so because of that you should always be in legendary dreadnought unless you either are in a more healing role if you want if you're gonna play heal bot say for a raid you might want to jump into something like unyielding sentinel 
or if you're in a quest where you're not going to be able to keep Blitz up because the encounters are spaced too far apart, you should probably go with Divine Crusader. But all in all, though, Legendary Dreadnought is going to be your best choice because Blitz just gives such a good DP, such a good DPS boost, and it also gives you great survivability because Master's Blitz gives you a bonus to PRR at the same time. Also, another key ability from Dreadnought is Lay Waste, which as a cleaver you're going to have. One of the reasons we take the cleave feat is because it's a requirement for Momentum Swing, and Momentum Swing in turn is a requirement for Lay Waste. And Lay Waste is a really nice attack. It gives plus 5 weapon damage and plus 1 critical threat multiplier, but the best thing about it is it gives this build much needed crowd control. Lay Waste has a trip effect on all your enemies around you. It gives a cleave motion and then all the characters you hit get knocked over. So it's really nice crowd control for a build that doesn't have any other options for CC. That's the big weakness of this build is the lack of crowd control and Lay Waste really helps fill that void. Let's go to Divine Crusader and I'll talk about that a little bit because this is a good, still a really good choice. It does complement the more healery side of the build because it gives you, um, it gives you some more uh, spell points. It also gives you some more positive spell power and positive healing amplification. And the big noticeable thing with this is your aura. Um, right now, I think my aura ticks for about, I think about a uh, hundred or something when I'm in. Yeah, well, like 92, something like that, depending on my buffs when I'm in Legendary Dreadnought. But when I switch over to Divine Crusader, my aura ticks for 130 and 260 on a crit. So it's really nice and helps make up for that PRR loss you're not getting from Master's Blitz when in Divine, when in Divine Crusader. You also get Strike Down, which is a cleave that does 500 fire damage. And um, you also can destroy undead under a thousand hit points, although that's not a good, really a good, doesn't really matter. But the main thing is, is it's a cleave that puts 500 damage to each mob. So if you're surrounded by 10 mobs and you cleave, that's an extra 5,000 damage. And that's not a firm 500 damage if the enemy is vulnerable to fire damage and you see purple numbers that can double. I've done 10,000 damage from it if I have a huge number of enemies that are vulnerable to that kind of damage in one swing. So it's really nice. You also get this aura of purification which um, d just does damage to enemies around you and you don't have to do anything. It's kind of like an aura that does damage. It's really nice to have. And the capstone, while not as good as Blitz, is still really good. Um, sorry, not the capstone. Where is it at? Yeah, I'm sorry. This is it. Zeal of the Righteous. It gives you 50 stacks of Righteous Zeal, which gives you your gives you some extra spell power, positive spell power, and it gives you double strike. It gives you 50 double strike and that decays over time but it's a, a nice little DPS boost there actually it's a nice it's a big DPS boost okay I think that's all for destinies oh let me open that back up I want to talk about twists um, these are the twists I use right now now I haven't even capped all my epic destinies as you can see but these are what I work with this is my uh, standard twist here. You gotta twist t sense weakness from the Fury of the Wild Tree. It gives you a lot of additional DPS. The lower your enemy gets in health, the more DPS you do to it. Against raid bosses especially, you're gonna give up tons and tons of DPS by not twisting this in. So you always want to have sense weakness twisted in. And when I'm in standard DPS mode, I like twisting Brace for Impact which gives you plus 40% fortification and plus 2 to saves and earthly reactions from Magister which gives you plus 6 reflex saves and a little bit of dodge. 
There's a lot of other nice saves, uh, nice uh, twists though, such as Draconic Burst from Draconic Tree. Really nice for just killing things around you. Mostly if you're running Epic Hard, its usefulness drops off some in Epic Elite because the mob HPs get so high, but that's a really nice crowd clearing ability. And then Rejuvenation Cocoon from Primal Avatar is really nice, and you're going to want to twist that in if you're in a healing role. Particularly if you're healing a tank or something. It's a very SP efficient way to heal party members and it does not have a range. So you can heal through walls, do all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about past lives. Now I don't have too many past lives on this character. This character is very first life friendly, but you obvi obviously can improve it with past lives. Most important past life is, let me show you, is your double strike past life, which is what you get from th getting martial, pass ep martial epic past lives. And for each stack, you get plus 3% double strike. So I have done three martial past lives, so I have a stacking 9% double strike and that's basically plus 9% DPS so that's really nice to have. Three divine past lives for brace I have one right now I'm working on my other two but three divine past lives for brace giving you plus three to your saving throws is really nice as well not not required but it's really nice I would consider the double strike is something you absolutely want to go for the brace eh, not so much unless you really want to nice bonus but not as essential Heroic past lives, it really doesn't matter. None of them really are essential. The Paladin past life is kind of nice. I have one of those, but it gives you a little bit of extra healing amp, so that's kind of nice, but no other past lives are necessary. I actually have three Cleric past lives because I've played this build so much, but it's not essential. It gives you an extra turn. So it's very first life friendly. You don't lose a whole lot by going first life. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some common questions that people have always asked me about the build and some common misconceptions people might have with playing a battle cleric like this. The first thing that new players might ask or other more experienced vets might ask is, you know, why no 17 cleric levels? Don't how can you be a healer without 17 cleric levels? Now, back in the day when cap was 20 and clerics needed mass heal, 17 cleric levels was required to be a raid healer. But now it's not necessary. The big raids back in the day were stuff like Shroud, Von Six, Vision of Destruction, Tower of Despair, where melees would group up and you would need to drop mass heals to heal them. But in today's game where there's a lot of self-healing, you just don't need mass heal anymore. So contrary to popular belief, having less than 17 cleric levels does not hurt your ability to be a healer. Some other players might have misconceptions about it, but this build is plenty good enough to be the healer in any raid or party situation. Some players might raise an eyebrow at the low wisdom score. I start with 8, and I think at 28 my wisdom score is only what, 25 right now and that's with a plus four tome. But wisdom has nothing to do with your healing ability. Wisdom only affects your DCs for your offensive casting and it affects your spell pool but that's not too important. The lower spell point pool is only a minor issue. Most of the time you'll have more spell points than you know what to do with since this is a burst healer. You have 20, I have 26 turns right now. If I'm in Crusader I have 29, excuse me, I have 29 so you have plenty, you can heal all day with your turns. You don't need your spell points to heal. Also, this is a melee cleric, so you're not a caster. That means you, all of your spell points can go towards healing. You don't have to split it between DPS and healing. So you actually can go a lot farther with your healing than you'd think. A common mistake a lot of new players make is taking too much wisdom, 
But again, it's not important for our goals here. It's a melee build. We don't need a lot of wisdom. We only need enough to meet our level 8 spell requirements. And you can easily get there by slotting a wisdom item, a wisdom augment, or using tomes. Some other things I want to talk about. The way you want to play this build is staying up front with the other melees. You want to cleave constantly and rely on aura and burst to heal party members. This build advocates a lot of healing amp because I found it vastly improves survivability in Epic Elite. Not only does high healing amp give you an aura that ticks for a high amount, it also allows your radiant burst to heal up the majority of your own health bar. Another thing that players don't think about about healing amp on a cleric is that a strong aura increases your DPS since with more passive healing you have to stop to heal yourself less often. As far as skills go, I didn't mention this, but this build does not take concentration. Some people raise an eyebrow at that, but I just want to note that even with an investment in full ranks of concentration, you're always going to fail your scroll concentration checks on Epic Elite anyways. You just won't make your concentration checks on the higher difficulties at the end game because there's just too much damage. So overall, concentration is a waste of skill points. Also, the build has Quicken, so you can apply that to all the spells you need. Well, that's about it for the build, guys. I hope you enjoy this if you decide to try it. just want to say it's a, it's a very good build if you play it right. It's awesome in Epic Elite content. I've had a lot of success. I've soloed Chronoscope on Epic Elite on this build. Um, you know, it's virtually unkillable, which is what I love about this build. You have so many self-healing options, and you have great survivability through your eight, your hit points, which are near 1100. You've got say saves in the 70s, six, 70s and 60s. This isn't even buffed, but once once you're buffed, all your saves are pretty much in the 70s region, and your fortitude save can even get to 80 at points at times. So it's a very survivable build. The DPS is not the best, not top tier, but it's I would say it's second tier. It's very good DPS. It's very survivable, and you have all the utility you want as being a party healer. So it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys can, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you can try out this build sometime if you're looking for a melee cleric. And until next time, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and tell your DDO friends and guildies about my channel. Thanks for watching.